Hello my crafty thrifty friends. Welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today I wanted to show you some inspiring fall decor DIYs. These are some items that I've kind of had on my list since I started crafting for fall and I could not wait to put them together and show you how I achieved the looks in today's video. We're gonna jump right into this video with a pumpkin. Y'all, sometimes these things get pricey for this size. I found two of these at a garage sale for a dollar each. Talk about a score. I am taking White Swan by DIY, and I'm gonna paint the entire pumpkin, including the stem, and I'm gonna do two coats of this all the way around. Now I am taking this beautiful, beautiful decoupage paper. I will have it linked in my description box. I do have some of them in stock and I love working with the decoupage paper that comes in blocks because just the possibilities are endless, but we're going to use this beautiful woman right here. I'm going to take a wet paintbrush and I'm going to start framing her face out. I'm just going to kind of like play around with it. Take a little bit off first. I could always take off more later and I'm just going to pull that paper away. It just gives you a nice like frayed, more natural, I guess, like tear instead of using your scissors. So I decided that I need a little bit more off on the right side. You could kind of see there's like more paper and I don't really need that little like emblem or little logo thing right there. So we're going to tear that off. Now I'm going to lay it on the flattest part of my pumpkin and I'm going to use painter's tape to kind of hold this in place so I don't have to jump on the struggle bus to, to start my, um, my liquid patina application. Sorry, I just smacked my lips, you guys. So I'm going to take my liquid patina and a mister bottle, and I am going to spray the paper, and then I'm going to apply a layer of my liquid patina. We want to do this in small sections, and y'all, I am not looking for perfection. If I get a few wrinkles, that's okay. It really does go with the image, um, and I want it to look old. So I was okay with that, but using the water on your decoupage paper is going to help kind of give you a little bit more pull and stretch in your paper. And it's also going to help create less wrinkles. So again, going in with the mister and then the decoupage medium, you could see I'm pushing my paintbrush into the grooves of the pumpkin. And y'all, I was pretty impressed. I mean, obviously it's a curved surface, there was indentations in the pumpkin and I still got a really clean application of this decoupage paper. I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to see her face very clearly, um, but I, I just went with it and I was very surprised. So I am going to bring this around. I, this is when I was like, man, oh, and I tore some of the paper. That's okay because look at, I just lay it back over and you never even notice. Um, I should have probably started on the other side, but her face still came out really smooth. Now I'm going to take my amazing resin, do as I say, not as I do, and please wear gloves. I'm going to mix that for about 40 seconds, and then I'm going to pour it into the Juliet mold. Now I like when I want the resin to be more pliable, I do a thinner amount of resin. Um, so I'm not filling it all the way to the top of my mold. This is going to help my mold like bend like nothing and it's easier to cut. It's just easier to work with this way. So I let that set up and then I took it apart and I cut it into two pieces. This is just one mold, one pour. And I am going to attach some um, painter's tape to the right side mold. This is going to help um, me know where to put that one on the left. I'm going to take tight bond, quick and thick, apply it to the back of my mold. I like to get a paintbrush and smooth it out, but you can totally use your finger, whatever you like. I'm going to flip that on around and lay it down. And at first I thought I was going to take this mold all the way around, like as a frame. But once I started putting it over her hair, it almost looked like a headpiece. So I ended up just doing the top part. So I'm going to tape that off. That way it doesn't go sliding out of place. Do the same thing for the right side of the mold. And then we are going to let that set up. Now, y'all, 
have fun with these things. I tell you all the time, I am by no means a professional here. I didn't know if this was going to work. I had a vision and I was okay that with the chance of this <laughs> being a fail, but I knew I had to try. I knew I wanted to use that mold. So just have fun and go with it. Just let it happen. All right. Now I thought I was going to do um, just a gray wax, but then I decided to take Kissing Booth and Petticoat Pink and create this like rose colored pink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just brushing it over the mold. Obviously I don't want this color to get on my white pumpkin or my picture, but I knew I wanted some kind of pop of color. So I am just brushing it on the top of the mold. Once that's completely dry, I get my DIY clear wax. You guys could get all these paint products on my website, unicorndustdesigns.com, linked in the description box. I put all of that over the pumpkin. Then I take this gray wax. This one's actually in my Amazon store link in my description box. And I am going to stipple that on to the, the roses. I'm also going to put it all over my pumpkin, but my main focus is going to be my roses. Then I stipple it down in the indentations of the pumpkin. I even do the stem and I started off with a paper towel, but I ended up getting my microfiber cloth. It just pulls the wax just like way easier. And then I'm going to do the same thing for those roses. That wax is going to settle in there and it looks beautiful and because you guys know I'm extra so I had to make it a little pumpkin to match and I'm cheap and I didn't want to waste the rest of that paint but this is how she turned out we'll call her Juliet she is so stunning and there is nowhere in the books that fall has to be orange okay we can put any pop of color that we want this is so fun you guys it's such a way of just like stepping outside the box and having fun and being creative and I I didn't know how this was going to turn out but I was very excited once it was all done look at how clearly you could still see that beautiful face on her I love it comment with the flower down below if you do too all right this one I actually thrifted with Brie. It was 50% off, so I got it for $5. We even plugged it in and it still worked. And I am going to tape the faces of this off. And the reason I'm doing that is because I do want to shellac this. It is old. I don't, I just don't want to take the risk of any kind of tannins or old oils coming through. So do it right the first time, then I won't have to go back, right? So we're going to tape all of that off. And then I shellacked it. I'm going in with Queen Bee and my Perfectionist brush. The Perfectionist brush has a beautiful tip on the bottom that helps get into corners, small details. It is absolute perfection, no pun intended. And <laughs> I'm gonna do one solid coat all the way around. Now, y'all, if you have not gotten your DIY paint brushes, do it because the price is going to change. They actually did change for a lot of people a while ago. I was just lucky enough to get a bunch of the brushes at the lower price. Um, but once those have sold out, then I have to, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. I need to go up in my prices. So make sure you grab them now if you want them. So we're going to go all the way around. I just do a messy coat of the paint to start off. And then the second coat of paint after this completely dries, I am going to stipple the paint on. Y'all know I have a phobia about paint brush strokes, so that's why I like to stipple. <laughs> now I'm just taking a baby wipe and I'm going to wet distress this. I didn't know Bree's idea was to add black wax to it. I didn't want to commit to that yet. So what I decided to do was wet distress it first. I'm just rubbing the high points and then just kind of doing it until I, I like the way that it looks. And after this, I'm going to apply big top. I thought this was the way to go that way. If I, if I, thought it needed more, I could still apply the black wax over Big Top. If I had applied the wax first, you cannot put Big Top over that, okay? Keep that in mind. So I decided the Big Top, and then I can make the decision on the black wax later. Well, after I was done with the, the Big Top, 
I decided it was absolute perfection as it is. Now, you guys, this turned out so beautiful. It matches perfectly with the florals on the frame of, look at that, of the clock. This would make for beautiful fall decor, everyday home decor. It is stunning. It even had little round um, clasps on the side that I ended up cutting off, but, um, and it works. However, somebody needs to go behind there and adjust things because it's kind of, it sounds wonky but it, it plugs in and it works. So you guys, I hope you love this one and it was such an easy flip. I'm going into our third one. Is this our third one? I'm gonna take this big pumpkin from Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99 y'all. And I'm gonna take this Sapia Blossom decoupage paper. I painted the pumpkin in crinoline and then I'm gonna take my smoothie brush. If y'all do like big surface painting or decoupaging, this brush is fabulous. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I did with all the others. I am going to spritz my paper with some water and I'm going to put my decoupage medium underneath whatever's remaining on my brush. I'm going to put that on top. This was a very easy transformation and I really, really loved how it turned out. I decided to go with crinoline as my base instead of pure white because the Sapia Blossom paper has more of like an antique look to it. So I didn't want a stark white behind my paper. So I'm gonna continue to go all the way up with my decoupage paper up to the stem. However, you're not gonna even see the stem, so I don't know why I did that, but you know what, it is what it is. Now I am just going to take some of that liquid patina and I'm gonna go around the, on top of the entire piece. Once it's dry, I'm gonna take my finger sander, go in downward motions, get all of that excess paper off. Then I will go back in with my paintbrush with a little bit of liquid patina on there and kind of just brush that to get any of those frayed edges and stuff secured down so we don't have any paper lifting up on us. Next, I'm going to take some paper clay and is that all right? Yeah, paper clay. And I am going to create a stem for this. I thought this paper and the size of it looked really upscale and I wanted the stem to match that. So I decided I was going to create my own. So I got the paper clay and I'm going to push this down. I have to say I've worked with a lot of the clays so far and the paper clay is very like easy to smooth down, I guess you can say. Um, and it's very soft, so it's easy to work with. However, when it dries, it does shrink up a little bit and that's why I don't like using it with my molds. But I'm gonna go towards the bottom and then I'm gonna create like these little points, I guess you could say. You guys, what is the, the name of a stem on a pumpkin? You guys told me last year, it's like a caduncle or a peduncle or something weird. Tell me down below in the comments. Now I am going to take this little spatula and create some lines in our stem. I'm going to take my finger after that and just kind of smooth it over. I want the lines, but I don't want them like too crazy. Once this is completely dried, y'all, I am not a master clay person. I totally thought you had to put glue under this to make it stay. So I was like trying to take it off would not happen. Then I was like, okay, I'll wait till it dries and then maybe I take it off and then apply the glue. No, it does not come off. So I'm just hoping like the clay doesn't fall off, okay? Because it wouldn't come off, but who knows? I'm gonna take dark and decrepit for the stem color and I'm gonna brush that on and then I'm gonna take off some of the excess with a paper towel. I, you could use the dark and decrepit liquid patina as a glaze as a stain, even as a decoupage medium. Um, possibilities are endless with the liquid patinas that we have. But I'm gonna go all the way down the stem and I then thought, you know what? I'm gonna add some white wax on here so that it brings out you know, the lines we created in the stem. Well, y'all, I did that right here. And then it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, I think I forgot to put the clear wax on first. Yep, I did, I wipe it back. I was like, oh no, oh no, what did I do? What do I do? Take it off, take it off, take it off. So in case you ever run into this issue, 
just apply some clear wax on top of your colored wax and it'll wipe back again. Okay. So a lot of that white wax did come off thankfully because I was just, I was a little much. I know I, I like to be extra, but that was a little too much. And then I debated on flowers. Initially, that was my vision. But then I thought, if I do flowers, I'm going to cover up all of that work that I put into the stem. And to be honest, the showcase here is the decoupage paper. So I struggled for a while, but I decided to leave it as is. I Let me know what you guys would have done. Would you have put the florals on there or do you think I did the right thing by leaving it as is? Cause I would have covered up the bees like partially like some of the print. And I just think the decoupage paper just is, is everything on here. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think. Our last DIY you guys is another ghost painting. I'm sorry. I'm addicted. So we are going to use this decoupage paper and you could seriously use any one of these pieces to do a ghost painting. But I realized how hard it is for other people and myself, including to find actual paintings to do these thrifted ghost portraits. <laughs> Montgomery's sitting with me. So I was thinking, what can I use that, you know, is it accessible? And then I thought this decoupage paper is absolutely perfect. So I grabbed this old wood sign that I had, and I'm just gonna do a very solid white swan base on it. Obviously I needed to cover up that Y that was on there. And I'm gonna leave that to dry. Now I'm gonna take my decoupage paper and y'all, this couldn't have fit more perfectly on this sign. And as you all know, I'm going to take liquid patina. I'm going to do a coat on the bottom. This time, I guess I didn't want to use the Mr. Bottle. And then whatever excess I have, I'm going to put it on top. I'm going to do this all the way up. And then I'm going to repeat the process of standing in downward motions to take all of that excess paper off. Now, my dad on the last one, he was like, you should have watered down some blue and black and darkened the sky. So this time... I thought I would take his advice and try it. So I got some blue and black acrylic paint, watered it down, and then I went over the sky. I went over the the like trees and everything because I knew of, uh, eventually I was going to paint the trees. So the only thing I didn't do it over was the barn. You guys have to think of if you want to try these, it's like paint by number, except for the ghosts that you are painting on. This is a paint by number kind of jam, okay? I promise I'll make it easy for you guys. I wanted to darken up the sky just a little bit more and make it look kind of like it's moving. So I darkened up that water a little bit more and then I wanted to add a darkening. I wanted to darken the shadows on the bottom. I swear explaining how to paint this is not the easiest, you guys. All right, then I created a moon. All I'm doing is a half circle here. I wish this was easy to film because I moved this darn thing around. I don't know how many times and ways. So I'm just filling that moon in and then I'm going to take some like, it was like a nude yellowish color and I am going to layer that in with the white. Don't be afraid to play around with your colors. You, you can't ruin it. See that like little nude yellow right there? And then I'm gonna do some little speckles of gray to make them look like the little craters in the moon. Very easy. And all this I'm doing while the paint is all wet, each layer. Now I'm moving on to the trees. When I'm doing the trees, I put out like four colors, like a red, an orange, a brown, a yellow. And I just start with my darker color and then I go in with the lighter colors. And again, it's like a paint by number. Use your picture as a reference, you know, like put those dark colors where the dark leaves are and then layer. I'm layering with yellow now. I do the same thing with the other side, except for this side, I wanted to make the leaves or the trees, I should say, different colors. So I did one like lighter, darker, medium. I won't put you through watching me do all of the trees again. But now we are going on and we're doing the bats again. So once again, it's like drawing the birds. Remember when we used to draw houses 
when we were little and then we would draw the little birds in the sky, the little swoop, swoop. It's exactly like that, except you're putting downward points on their wings are like a half a diamond, the bottom of a diamond. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right. And I wanted to add, since there were a lot of doorways, I'm going to add some spider webs. I just grabbed the thinnest paintbrush I could find and I started going for it. And y'all, again, I am not a pro. Most of this stuff I had to Google how to draw spider webs, how to draw bats. And then I would just practice a couple times on a scrap piece of paper. And then I just went with it. Montgomery's having a grand old time with Legos right now. And I do it a couple other places you could see up here on the right. Now we're doing the ghosts. So I'm taking white. This one's kind of peeking out of the door frame right here. And again, sorry if I'm saying and again, but I did do this in the last video as well. We're gonna layer with some gray acrylic paint. And again, while this is wet, I am going over the gray with the white. I'm not changing brushes. I'm using one brush and just going back and forth between the white and the gray creating layers. And you're gonna just do this off and on until you get the look that you are wanting. So I continue to do that and then I kind of dry it down and then I'm gonna take this black marker and draw in the eyes of that ghost. I'm gonna move over to the inside. That brush was not working for me. And we are going to make another blobby ghost. You can make like the, bo <laughs> the bottoms like wispy. You could do like a straight edge. It's completely up to you. We're gonna do the shadowing over here. And this one you could see a little better how I'm just going right on top of that gray. And then I will go back over it with white, going with gray again. Now I wanted to try a sitting ghost. I did not know how this was going to go. This is where I was like, uh, this is looking very not right. But I just, I, I went with it. And then I even decided to add an arm because that's how I roll. And it ended up being fine. I was just trying to think of the natural way a ghost arm would flow. Oh my gosh, I'm a mess. But you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. So I am going to, <laughs> here you go, Nugget. Sorry, I'm recording while she's up. So we know, we, we can only imagine how hard that is. And then I'm just gonna do a circle pumpkin right here. So I just put a circle shape I dry it just to see if I need to darken it up a little bit more. So I go in with another layer and then I'm gonna create a stem right there on top. And that pumpkin is done. I added some more of that nude yellow into the shadow so that it looked like the moon was shining downwards. And this is where you just have to have fun and play around with it and add, you know, a little bit of everything. So I'm going to finish this off with big top, clearing it off. And this is done. I really like how this turned out. It was perfect for this painting a ghost trend. I love it. I've been having so much fun doing these. It just kind of gives me a break from like my everyday kind of DIYing that I do and it just allows me to have fun. So hopefully you guys like it. That's why I'm putting them at the end of the videos because I know it's not everybody's jam, but I've just been having fun being creative. Thank you guys for being here with me and I'm going to see you on Thursday. <laughs> oh, excuse what? What is that face for? Oh, oh, oh you're going to fall off of there. Is that your, is that? Your thrift skirt that you thrifted? What? This house is a mess. Can you say hi? Hi. Can you say bye? Bye. Good job.